Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a new Enum session where we're going to be basically doing part two of the video where we went through all the different Enums and then some of the functionality. I actually got an email from and a comment from one of my subscribers telling me that I needed to redo this session because some of the things that I mentioned weren't quite right. So I want to do part two to do some of those corrections and actually go through with you in, in fixing some of those. So when I when I showed you before, I was actually showing you the Bitwise operator OR that allows you to select multiple values into a single enum. Well, you can't, you can't really do that unless you add an attribute to the enum itself. And not only that, there's also some other things that we need to do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a, add a flags attribute to the enum. And what the flags attribute does is actually allows us to do multiple values. So this is not gonna be correct because we're telling the compiler that the enum that we're gonna use can be used as a flag, which means that we can have multiple values in a single variable of type enum. So the other thing that, I, that I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna go through, you know, talking about the bitwise or operator, which means that some of these values are not gonna, are not gonna be correct. You, whenever you're using, if you're using this for comparison, you have to always set this to the power of two. So this needs to be, none needs to be zero, pause needs to be two, and then you need to go to four, then eight, and then 16. And then the reason why we need to do this is because behind the scenes, all it is, is it's just an integer. And an integer has basically eight bits. So each one of these are gonna be represented like this. So this is gonna be for zero, it's gonna be two, four, six, eight bits. And if we wanna do menu one, we're basically gonna do the bit representation of one then we can do also pass, which is actually gonna be two, zero, sorry, one, zero at the end. And then this is gonna be a four, which then it's gonna move the bit to that position. Then the next one, it's going to be A, which will do the same thing. And we'll do the same thing with the last one, just basically shift the, uh, shift uh, value to the left and one. So if you notice, there's there's a pattern here where, you know, we, every single one of the byte by, by representation has only a single number. So for zero, everything is gonna be zero. For one, we're gonna start at one on the right hand side. And then for two, basically we're, we're shifting the bit to the left. And now that's a value of two. Then for four, it's gonna move to the to the left, and then so on. So the reason why we can use these when it comes to you know if you want to set multiple values, what's gonna happen if we do if we do an OR operation, in let's say we do let's say that we do plane and player idle. So if we look at plane and player idle, what's gonna happen is we're gonna do an OR, which means that we're gonna merge these two. So the end result of plane plane and player idle, it's gonna look like this. It's actually gonna be, it's gonna copy that value, paste it right here. We're gonna grab the bit that we set on the plane and set it below. And that is gonna be your result. If we do, if we do an OR operation on those two. Excellent, so how can this help, help us in games? Well, the reason why this is gonna really help us in games is because we can now be inclusive as far as like what kind of flags we can check for. We can we can definitely check now and do a comparison to make sure that the flags that are set are you know playing and player idle. So let's look at the game mode now and see how see what the value store is. So I'm gonna copy this and let's just do column class. Perfect, let's go back into Unity. And I'm going to disable video 10 and let's enable video eight. 
which is the one that we're on right now, and basically part two of that video. And looks like I couldn't find the flex attribute. And let's go back into it. I believe it's flags. Let me. I think I'm missing just a usage, using a statement. So let me right click here and I need to actually do system. Bring in system. And I think that would do it. It's like now going to Unity. Hit play. And if everything works, we shouldn't see any errors. Perfect. So we can now see that the the game mode is actually set to two modes where before that didn't work. I'm actually seeing playing and player player idle. So that's cool. So now what I'm gonna do here is let me let me actually check. The current mode is set to plane and also player idle. So it looks like this is this is actually working now, where I'm checking to see that you know if the game mode equals to plane or player idle using the or bitwise operation. So the other thing that I can do that I was I was actually studying is you can also use something called it, it has flags. So you can say game mode has flags, and we can say we, want, we can check to see if it has the flag of, of plane. And I'm going to just copy this command, paste it right below it, so that we can see that that's the that's the area that we're on. And then it's set to game mode plane. Perfect. Let's go back into Unity, hit play. And see what happens, and we got an error because I think I got the wrong. Let me go back in here. Well, let's just do capital H has flag. Looks like it was has flag with capital H. Okay, perfect. And, and we can see that that's working. The has flag is returning, basically telling us that the game mode is set to plane, and that's working just fine. The, the other thing that we can also do is we can do an OR operation, an AND operation on here, by just using has flags. We can say if it has that flag and it has the plain idle flag, then we're gonna get we're gonna get into inside of this if statement. Go back into Unity, hit play, and then Play one more time to restart it. And we should see another line right below it. And looks like has flags is working just fine. So that's really what I need what I wanted to cover on, on this video. There are other types of bitwise operators that you can use. And so I cover the OR operator. You can do a ZOR, you can do a NIN bitwise operator. So I'm not going to be covering some of those because I'm actually not even using those in my game. So, but you're more than welcome to check out a link that I'm going to put in the description of this video that goes into more in depth on how to use enums for more, I guess, advanced scenarios. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments of this video and don't forget to share and subscribe to this video. Thank you.